I'm Damona Hoffman, and I am a certified dating and relationship coach. I've been helping people find love online and offline, but predominantly online for over 15 years. I'm actually an online dating success story myself, and I've worked with Match.com. I work now with OkCupid as their official dating expert at OkCupid. I can look at matching questions. I can look at uh, different behaviors online and really get a sense of the current trends and the current attitudes towards dating. And so I'd love to, to share with you what's happening so that you can get out ahead of, of the trend and ultimately use that knowledge to find love. So first, what we're seeing is that commitment is on the rise. I think this is a, a factor of coming out of the pandemic. A lot of people took this time to get clarity on what they really wanted. When we, when we were isolated and we had solitude and we could really figure out, is this the life that I want to be living? And we saw a lot of people change jobs, change cities, and a huge increase in people saying that they want a committed relationship. So I know dating apps sometimes get a bad rap as being, you know, hookup apps. And uh, some of them are. And I, I think any tool, as I was saying earlier, if you're, you, you, it's, it functions the way that you use it, right? So if you're using it for, as a hookup app, it can be very effective as a hookup app. But if you're using it as a commitment app, and you align your actions to that goal, then you can get what you want online. You can find an app and use the app in that way to get what you want. So for a lot of people, it's commitment. Uh, we also are seeing a big uptick in people being open to long distance dating. So a moment ago, I said that people were moving, people were taking new jobs, we really took this last, oh my gosh, three years to examine how we were living our lives. And for many people, we like I, I always thought, oh, I'm rooted in this city. This is my place. But then as people started working from home, you start to question, is this really where I want to be? And is this the most important thing for me to stay here? Or if I found love somewhere else, could I? Could I move for love? And I've had so many clients over the years move across country, move outside the country, or have someone move in with them from another another place, another country, another city. And it really can work. But you have to both have the same end goal and the same relationship goals overall. So this is a new change this year that we're seeing on the data side. Long distance dating, more people are saying they're open to dating someone who lives more than three hours away. And y'all, I like, I like clutch the pearls and I, <laughs> my heart skipped a beat because in all the time that I have been coaching, I seriously only saw people wanting to, to date sometimes even in a 10 mile radius. And for a lot of metropolitan areas, <laughs> like that people are like 10 miles, that's even too far. It, it has to be five, five miles, five blocks even. So this is a big shift. And it's really showing, I think that people are being more strategic about finding love, that if you want to find your person, distance is not, is not a factor. And it's all about, about how you show up in that relationship. And I, I talk tons about how to, how to date long distance and how to keep the relationship going on the Dates and Mates podcast. But I'm going to stick to, I'm going to stick to the topic at hand today and peak dating season. We're also seeing inflation as having an effect on dating. <laughs> uh, there's a, a, a term I coined uh, when I was on, um, I was on Access Daily, uh, Access Hollywood's daytime show. I, I do like a dating term segment there. And I talked about this term, infladating. And what this is, uh, according to OkCupid, is that daters are really scaling back on how much they want to spend on dating due to inflation. And we can look at it as a negative, but I actually see it as a positive because I feel like people were spending so much time and so much money and making such an investment in dates before that it left a lot of folks feeling depleted. Maybe you felt this way as well. 
it made you feel depleted, made you feel resentful about dating because not all of your first dates or second dates are going to turn into something more. And you can waste a lot of time and a lot of money out there. So if you're more strategic, you do more creative dates, you do activity dates, which I've always been a huge fan of, and look at ways to connect with someone and not to impress them or wine and dine them. I actually think that will lead to better connections. We're also seeing a trend towards dry dating. I've seen this trend now for several years, probably about three years this has come up um, looking at the dating app data, but it's continuing to grow. And especially in January, a lot of people start the new year with their New Year's resolution and go for a dry January period. So we're seeing a lot of that. We're seeing people that want to date sober. And even if they, they are not sober, they do drink, they're choosing to go to dates sober, which I also think is a great idea so that you can tell who you're really making a connection with without, you know, we, we think of alcohol as a social lubricant, but it, it, you know, it, it, it's also something that disinhibits you and it makes you a different version of yourself and it makes it harder for you to really tell if you and the person sitting across from you have a true connection. So, even if you're not going to do dry dating, like maybe just try to try to drink a little bit less and see if it changes how you make a connection on a date. We saw this last year as well, but uh, again, this year people are dating against type. People are open to dating someone who's not their usual type. And Really, like, what is a type anyway? I, I'm always talking to my dating accelerator. That's my signature program that I do every year. I'm always talking to people about this idea of type and what we think we need in a relationship. And we tend to be attracted to things that are familiar to us. So we're like, why do I always date these jerks? Well, because you are being attracted to that familiarity and that thing that you know. But if we play it forward, how is that thing that you know played out for you in the past. If it hasn't worked out, sometimes you have to change those inputs. And dating a different type or or even as an experiment, going out with people who you maybe a year ago wouldn't have necessarily considered, but going in with curiosity. That's what I always tell my clients. Be curious when you when you show up on the date. And I've talked about that here on this podcast as well before. The curiosity is is going to tell you a lot more than chasing chemistry. So go for that and be open to dating against type. We're also seeing a trend towards conscious dating. You may have seen some dating raps pop up on your TikTok, or um, you may have even yourself started to track on spreadsheets what's happening on your dates. This is a great, uh, this is a great thing. And this is something that I've had my clients do since the beginning in the Dating Accelerator program because if if what gets tracked gets measured. And when you are tracking what's happening in your life, that's when you can actually see change. And so I'm going to give you some tips and tools for how to optimize your profile and how to use dating apps more effectively. But it's really important that you take a snapshot of where you are right now and what's happening and that you track what changes create different results for you. So I'll split test a dating profile photo for a client and see which one gets not just the most number of matches, but the the highest number of matches from the kind of people you actually want to meet or that actually turn into dates or that turn into meaningful connections. Actually write it down and actually track it. I've also written for the Washington Post Date Lab. It's a matchmaking column that's been running for many, many years. And after every date lab date, I would tell my uh, tell the people that I would interview, that I'd match an interview for that column to write down what happened after the date. Like just just take notes because you think, especially you know, if you've had you've had a, a couple glasses of whatever, your favorite drink, you think you're going to remember all the details, but you often will forget the details. And in the case of a lot of these date lab participants, within 48 hours, I'm, I'm doing the interview. And sometimes they couldn't even remember the details of the date. And I would have to prompt them with things that I heard from, from their date about what happened or really jog their memory step by step. So you can shortcut that for yourself. 
by just journaling when you get home from a date and actually and actually memorializing how you're feeling, that way that you're feeling on the date is so, so key to get in touch with because we're not, we're not checking boxes anymore. Remember, we're not dating, we're not dating our type. We're really looking for connection. And if you're doing that, you must be conscious of the way that you feel when you're with someone because someone can look great on paper, but if it doesn't feel right, or if energetically they don't lift you up, they drag you down, check all the boxes you want. That's not your person. But tracking this and really being conscious about how we're dating and how we're, how we're investing in our love lives. Because the way that I look at it, the person that you choose to partner with is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. They affect your family, your finances, where you live, your mental health, maybe your physical health. There's so many things that hinge on this decision. No pun intended. (laughs) There's so many things that hinge on this decision. Why is that the decision that so many people leave up to chance? We're so strategic about everything else, especially at the beginning of the year. We look at, uh, you know, our our professional goals, our fitness goals, and we're like, yeah, I'm going to track and measure that, and I'm going to show up and create a plan and get an accountability partner and and really do this. And then when we look at love, we're like, I just want it to happen. I just want it to magically happen. And I hate to tell you, I mean, I also work with the queen of rom coms. I, I I work on the Drew Barrymore show, and I've told her she makes my job very difficult for me because we've seen so many of these stories that we start to believe the fairy tale, we start to believe the rom com ending, and then when we get resentful when we see that we have to put in effort in this area of our life as well to get what we want because we were told it should just magically happen. But I've I've been doing this long enough to know that when when you put attention towards your dating life, that's when you see the changes happen. It's not that old adage of it'll happen when you least expect it. Nah, honey, it won't. <laughs> when you least expect it, then you have you have the lowest expectations for what will happen. And I really want us to elevate our dating experience this year. So those are the trends that are happening in in the world of dating and dating apps. 